Despite Prince Harry's confession that he cut his book's manuscript from 800 pages to 400, it's still fair to say that the world's wayward prince might have overshared in spare. By that is not meant that trope about getting frostbite down in his nether regions, or that time he played strip billiards out in Vegas, or even that of losing his virginity out in back of a village pub. Bottom line, Harry can post any of that Huck Finn as a British royal stuff any old time they form a sort of picaresque valediction that he did somehow manage a real growing up outside palace walls, even, or especially, as a member of one of the most privileged families on earth. All good on the extremities of youth, then. In spare, Harry rounds every base with gusto. It showcases him with appetite for life that, however we married or judge his actions, was ever on display by Harry in public and in private. That was the key to his immense, former, popularity among the British. Spare's narrative is considerably stiffened by Prince Harry's attendance at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, RMA Sandhurst, and his two combat deployments to Afghanistan. We can consider Sandhurst and his decade of military service an anchor point at which the prince becomes understandably less heedless and headlong, both more charitable and tougher. There are other battles to come for him, but his military years mark a step up into the real world on his own. In the largest sense, Spare establishes four such narrative turning points, or more crucial life experiences, that require Harry to step up and buckle down. Harry makes it his business in spare to illuminate some, if not exactly all, of the more subtle ways in which the events are connected. Spare is a book of bridges to and between these turning points. As we know, then. The first event is the death of his mother Diana as Harry was on the cusp of adolescence, the second is his experience of combat as a young forwardly placed soldier and pilot, the third is his marriage and the establishment of his own identity as a father and husband and the fourth is his recent tumultuous exit from his family. Whether it's an as told to like sparer, actually written by its own main actor, by definition every autobiography comes to us through a lens cast backward. That lens can color its storytelling in many different ways, be it exacting, ironic, foggy, unflinching, comedic, deadpan, wise, angry, forgiving. Harry's voice in Spare bears several of those qualities, and sometimes several at once, but especially forgiving he is not. He's preachy. He likes his opinions, and he's not shy of handing them out, especially when they concern certain of his more recently developed theories, alleging the deeper workings of certain courtiers or administrative sections of the palaces. It's also fair to say that Spare's narrative structure and the voice of the book is channeled by the Harry's talented writer, J. R. Moringer, is selling. After the predicted leaks of the book in the week prior to its January 10 publication date, and two long-form interviews on CBS Apostrophe 60 Minutes, and on Britain's ITV Spare sold 3.2 million copies in its first week out. Over time, it seems poised to become one of the most sold memoirs.